thank you, Father, for everything. Lord, we we thank you that we live in a supernatural kingdom that can't be seen. Therefore, it's an invisible world. It's an invisible kingdom. We live in this world, but we're not of this world. Jesus said, you are in the world, but you are not of this world. Be of good cheer, for I have overcome this world. So, Father, we thank you tonight, Lord, that you have empowered us to live in an earthly world with supernatural power. I heard somebody make a comment about the president that he's living in an alternate world. And he should move on from the election. I totally disagree with, the com with that comment. Amen. He came from a Christian, too. I, I understand he probably didn't have a bad intention, but he's actually wrong. First of all, all of us are called to live in an alternate world. That world is ruled by the principles of God's Word, by the truth of God's Word, and it's a supernatural world. It's an invisible world. Amen. There are angels you can't see. There are demons you can't see. Amen. There's a devil you can't see, and there's God who is a spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. And you know Amen. what? That's an alternate world. So every Christian should live in an alternate world. Amen. We're not divorced from Amen. this life. We live practically. We work to earn money so we can buy food and provide for our families. But the way we live and the way we think should be out outside of this world. Apart from the practical things that need to be done, you must live by faith. You must walk by faith. And when you do that, you walk by seeing things that no one else can see, by believing things that no one else believes, by hoping Amen. for things that no one else any any ability to hope for. So if the president is walking by faith and he's trusting you and he's praying, I'm all for it. I support Amen. him 100%. I reject the idea that he should move on because, first of all, who are you to say? And he should live, he shouldn't live in an altar. How do you know that God's not working? You might have said that to Moses when he came up to the Red Sea and said, just give up, turn around and give up to the Egyptians. You might have said that to them when they walked around the Jericho walls for seven days. Say, come on now, what are you guys doing? I mean, you've been walking around there now six days. I mean, you think the walls are really going to come down? I think you ought to give up that idea. I mean, you could have said that to Esther. I mean, you could have said that, you could have said that about any of the great heroes of the Bible. And said that to David, young David, who went up to Goliath and said, you know what? I can take you out, and I'm going to take you out. Everybody thought he was probably living in an alternate world. What kind of world is David living in? Well, he's living in a world by faith. Amen. He's walking by faith and Amen. not by sight. He sees something that, that, only God, that only God can reveal. He sees something that none of the other soldiers see. They see a giant. He sees a wind. He sees somebody that, that the soldier saw somebody that they couldn't defeat. He saw somebody that could be defeated. Amen. And so we believe that, Lord. We believe that Antifa, Black Lives Matter, the Democrats, all their garbage, tech, big tech, Facebook, Twitter, they can all be taken out and taken down right now. China's but a drop in the bucket. The nation is but a drop in the bucket. China can be taken on with the right person Man. in power, with the right people in power, with the right people in Congress the right people in positions of leadership and authority, we could take them out. And Lord, we're believing for that, we're expecting that, and we're hoping for that. Your word says faith is the evidence of things hoped for. Amen. So we thank you, Lord, that we hope for something that is built on your truth. Amen. It's built and founded on your word. Amen. <clears throat> Scientists, they can't go, the people, the scientists that don't believe in God, they have nowhere else to go but into their puny little head <laughs> and thinking about their puny little theories Amen. of how everything came into existence. And still it's a puny, pathetic little thought that they have in their puny little head, in their puny little minds, with their puny little brains, they're going to try to figure out what the Creator did? Come on. God Give me good. a break. <laughs> I mean, talk about pathetic... I mean, when you just step back and, and look at that for a minute and think about how a puny little brain from a man can figure out all that the Creator has done, it's impossible. But yet, they think they're so smart. They think they're so smart, they came up with a foolish idea like evolution, and they still haven't proven it, still can't prove it, never will prove it. It's never happened. It never will happen. It didn't happen. 
It's their own little puny little theory <laughs> that they hold on to. Hold on for dear life because Amen. they have nothing else to hold on to because they don't want to believe in God. So they won't acknowledge God because they, they know that if they do, they come under the authority of God. And oh, no. Oh, some scientists, you know, they got to believe that they're the supreme intelligence of the world. <laughs> but they're not. <coughs> yes. Amen. God is the only wise God. Paul wrote to Timothy, to the only wise God glory and honor and dominion. Yep. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, the Ancient of Days, the one who was here before it was all put together, Jesus Christ. Amen. Came into this world thousands of years later and died on a cross and then rose up from the dead. He's alive forevermore. He's the same one that was there Amen. in eternity before he came. The only thing, the only thing different <clears throat> is he became a man. For a little while and then became a servant for a little while so he could show us how to live and then he died on a cross and then he rose from the dead Amen. and he is alive forevermore jesus christ the son of the living god thank you lord for your word today thank you for your presence I pray for every person listening, for every individual that, is here, that has heard this message, that they will hear with their heart. <clears throat> you said in Revelation, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the church, to the churches. Just remember, my friend, in this world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. Jesus has overcome this world. Amen. And we shall overcome this world. This won't be the last fight we're in. There's going to be a few more down the road. In fact, there might be many more down the road, but praise God. God gave us the ability to fight. He said, take upon your, Paul said, put on the whole armor of God. Put on the helmet of salvation. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Take up the shield of faith. Have your loins girt about with truth. Put on the sandals of peace, of the gospel of peace. Take up the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And when you've done everything, stand. Be ready to fight because armor is for one purpose. Armor is for fighting. Amen. It's for fighting a battle. We're in this battle for life. We're going to fight this battle. We're happy to be in it. I'm glad that God's chosen us. He saved us. When he saved us, he delivered us. He said, okay, I'm going to put you in a, I'm going to put you in a fight to win and to fight the good fight of faith so that you and your family can live and so that other people can live. An old, an old song that we sang in Bible college, it goes like this. It's very short, but we used to sing it sometimes in chapel in the morning. And if I can remember it correctly, it goes like this. Freely, freely you have received. Freely, freely give. Go in my name and be because you believe, others will know that I live. <clears throat> Since Jesus Christ came into this world and built his church, his command was to go into all the world and preach the gospel. First of all, he said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. <clears throat> After he came and before he left this world that he came to die for, he said, now go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. You are faithful, will be faithful to us every day of our life. Amen. That is the confidence we have <clears throat> tonight. That is the confidence we have in the days ahead. And that is the confidence we have in every other night that will follow. In Jesus' name, we pray and thank you, Lord, for everything. Amen. Amen. And amen. And amen. Thank you, Lord.